Our pace of living leaves us little time for leisure. Our program will give you a chance to experience the fascinating world of traveling, extreme adventures, hunting and fishing. Each week we will take you to the most beautiful places of Kazakhstan. Recently at the Tasmoran Game Reserve there have been unusual visitors. State officials, representatives of non-government and scientific organizations visited the Ili River banks to share their experience of managing a game reserve. There were some pheasants over there, but we don't have them anymore after the hunting season. The meeting was organized as part of the state project for the improving of the system of planning, monitoring, saving and effective use of wildlife resources in the context of Kazakhstan's transition to green economy. Uh, welcome to Tasmanian hunting area in Kazakhstan. Uh, we're here to visit as part of a project designed by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the government of Kazakhstan through the Fisheries and Hunting Committee. Uh, the project is trying to help develop a sustainable wildlife and hunting management program for the country. Canadian expert Ken Jinkford has prepared a report based on the results of the visit with his recommendations for the optimization of the legislation for better management of game reserves. Among the experts that participated in the visit were Sergei Sakalov, the leading expert at Association Concerna, and Rizbek Baidavletov, head of the Kazakh State Teriological Institute of Zoology. After a week of the visit to Tasmaran, a round discussion table was held where a resolution about the modern state of the wildlife and game reserve management in Kazakhstan was adopted. Currently, due to the initiative of the Forestry and Game Reserve, with the support from the UNDP, so-called pilot projects have been launched. Game Reserve Tasmaran has been chosen as a pilot territory where innovative methods of wildlife management will be tested. A few years ago the game reserve remained ownerless. The number of species inhabiting the territory declined significantly. Three years ago one firm rented the hunting area and within these three years it literally erased it from ruins. Now the number of pheasants increased by several times. The number of roe deer rose up to 30 species. We have 50 to 60 wild boars and a large number of hares. The issue of optimization of legislation in the fields of sustainable wildlife management are particularly topical in the context of continuing reforms of game reserves at the government level. When you try and do this, there is a couple of things that you need to have in place. You need to have good governance, which means essentially very clear, simple legislation and rules that everyone understands. You need to have a clear mandate for the different agencies that are involved in government, so everyone knows who is responsible for what. You need to have good science, which is basically there to make sure that population numbers of wildlife are, are accurately represented, that harvest limits are sustainable, and that there is a system of ongoing monitoring of wildlife, which is very important. Thirdly, you need to make sure there's protection of wildlife so that poaching and illegal hunting is dealt with and prosecuted. Finally, you need to recognize that wildlife has a value. It can be a cultural value, but it is also an economic value. And importantly, hunting is also a, a, has, is an economic activity that brings income to a country, to local livelihoods, and to operators. Managing director of the project for breeding red deer in the reserve Nurlan Kikimov shows the guests the area of the park. During their visit to our game reserve, they gave us valuable recommendations for further development of the hunting area and how to increase the amount of game here.
Red deer used to be a common representative of wildlife in the valley of the Ili River, but at the end of the 19th century the animals became extinct due to excessive hunting. In the 21st century, approaches in treating the environment changed radically. Now biologists and hunting experts are trying to correct the mistakes of the previous generation. The development of ecology in the second half of the 20th century changed our views on ecosystems. In the past we considered wild animals on the basis of their harm or benefits. Today we have good understanding that the ecosystem is one whole organism and humans are just part of it. We don't have the right to terminate some species because we don't consider beneficial for us. We showed our guests our aviary where we have red deer and wild boar. They were pleased with the result of work. We showed them the place where we plan to build the second aviary, where we will breed red deer and wild boar separately. As Rizbek Baidavletov says, the world population of red deer accounts only for 12,000 species. A third of them inhabits the territory of Kazakhstan. Durlan Kikimov shares his hopes and concerns about the future of red deer. The experiment at the Tasmarin Game Reserve proved successful. All the female deer have been giving birth to their young for the past two years. But no one knows what will happen to the young red deer when they are set free from the aviary to their new natural habitat. For the last 100 years, the ecosystems of the Ili River Valley changed significantly. There has been a decrease in the area of the riparian forests, and the whole lake system have disappeared. Human activity at the river delta has had a negative effect on the state of the vegetation and soil of the area. Will the rational management of game reserves help revive the flora and fauna of the region? Which strategies are more rational to apply for better wildlife management? Conversation is a strategy in protecting nature that was first used in the late 20th century. It is based on the idea that it is necessary to create socio-economic conditions in which local people will be interested in saving the environment and wildlife using them rationally. Classical example of the conservation strategy was the reviving of the populations of Mahor in Pakistan by equitable distribution of income from trophy hunting and the benefits for the local community from the trophy. Preservation is a system of taking care of nature based on the idea that nature needs to be protected by way of administrative vans. This practice was proved to be effective by Emperor Friedrich who strictly forbade grazing swine in the royal woods. Thanks to this measure, a few areas of derelict oak woods were saved in Western Europe that used to be common on the territory from the Pyrenees to Carpathian Mountains. It turns out that it is impossible to revive the ecosystems of oak woods even with the help of the whole scientific community, as the wood is not just trees, but coexistence of millions of organisms that form a harmonic symbiosis that is impossible to model even with the smartest computer. Large forest territories that one can see in Western Europe are nothing but synthesized surrogate. The real oak woods still exist only on the former lands of German emperors. A modern example of preservation is nature preserves, where access for visitors is strictly limited or banned, and those who violate the regulations receive punishment, depending on how serious the violation is. Every state uses the elements of both strategies to some degree and chooses different proportions according to their socio-economic conditions. Finding the right balance between the interests of local people of the valley and the long-term ecological stability of the region for future generations is not easy.
In the resolution of the roundtable, experts try to consider various aspects that have an effect on the environmental sustainability. Head of the board of the Hunters' Union of Kazakhstan and the subjects of the Konsanar Game Reserve, Oral Bayabd Karimov, pointed out that in the conditions of the modern market, it is necessary to pay attention to the economic state of the hunting area as a business. In particular, it is important to develop trophy hunting that brings this field considerable revenues necessary for the reproduction of the wildlife. For this, it is of utmost importance that bureaucratic procedures are simplified. It is also necessary to improve wildlife protection. Foreigners are used to the abundance of wild animals in hunting areas, so in order to remain competitive on this market of hunting tourism, one needs to strengthen protection of wildlife. In Kazakhstan, uh, you have a long tradition of hunting and you now have a system of hunting areas where government enters into an agreement with individuals or limited companies to manage wildlife and protect wildlife in return for being able to use wildlife through quotas. It's a great system on paper, but I think the reality is that in many, many cases, in many hunting concessions, including Tasmiran, uh, it is not a profitable activity. So therefore, the owners of the hunting areas are investing their own funds. The central idea of the resolution was the thought that local communities should benefit from the efficient use and management of the wildlife. For this reason, it is necessary to consider new approaches in context of the international experience. For example, breeding wild species at a farming scale could boost the populations of wild animals. In addition, it is the most realistic way of saving and reproducing precious biological resources and a real way of the development for small businesses in rural areas and hunting tourism of the country as a whole. Wildlife is a renewable resource provided that it is managed efficiently without any harm to existence of the populations of wild species. Experts highlight the importance of the adaptive management of quotas. This means quotas and limits for the use of wildlife resources should be imposed not at the nationwide level and not even at the regional level, but at the level of the population of the particular species. If a game reserve has a large number of wild animals of a particular kind, it should receive well-reasoned quotas. On the contrary, if the number of animals is small, hunting should be stopped for a while. So I think there are opportunities to develop this Tasmanian hunting area uh, in a sustainable way that would benefit local residents and particularly hunters from Almaty who come here or are interested in hunting pheasants or interested in wild boar and they may be interested in roe deer and certainly there's fishing opportunities in this whole river as well that would be very useful to uh, access. A lot of attention in the resolution was paid to the wildlife monitoring. In order to manage the resources effectively, the data should be accurately reported. Kazakhstani studies on hunting have been renewed. After quite a long break, if we have more talented and young scientists in this field, they will get established. During the discussion, Rizbek Baidavletov suggested setting up a coordination center at the Institute of Zoology for keeping records and monitoring of the numbers of wild species in hunting areas. An important theme of the discussion was the question of allowing quiet zones for wild animals. When these zones are built, no less than 15% of the hunting area should be used for this purpose. But the problem is coordinating these quiet zones with other landowners. It is necessary to leave a plot of land for wild animals if we want future generations to know what it feels like to hear red deer stag and wild goat bellowing at the sunrise.